Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz, and I've got a detailed forecast update coming your way for November 26th, Wednesday, 2025. We've got a lot of thunderstorms still on the forecast, including today's outbreak, which is going to be pretty gnarly for New South Wales and parts of Queensland, and then tomorrow, which is going to see something special once again develop through parts of southeast Queensland, including Brisbane and the Sunshine Coast. Last night, we had a powerful squall line rip through southeast Queensland, bringing damaging to locally destructive wind gusts and heavy rainfall that has since moved offshore. However, you can see all of this cloud coverage moving through in towards southeastern Queensland right now and over the border into parts of New South Wales. Now, unless this clears pronto in the next hour or so, which is, uh, it would be a mean feat, that's for sure, we're not going to be seeing severe thunderstorms to the magnitude that we've seen over the last couple of days through parts of Queensland. This cloud coverage will throttle storm activity and the way that it does that is by preventing the sun bearing down onto the Queensland mainland and really heating things up throughout the day, which means instead of the usual mid-30 degree temperatures that we're going to see through southeast Queensland today, they're going to be on the lower 30 or even higher 20 degree side and as long as they stay below about 33 or 34 degrees, the chances of severe thunderstorms will be thwarted off. The instability will not be high enough and we won't have as much moisture in the atmosphere. It just won't be good enough for severe thunderstorms to develop. I hope that makes sense. But through southeast Queensland, there is still the risk of thunderstorms and we may be seeing some strong storms develop here and there through parts of the Sunshine Coast and then up into the Capricornia coastline as well. I definitely think the, this model here has overbaked the forecast for the Sunshine Coast. However, again, conditions are somewhat favourable for storms later this afternoon along the Sunshine Coast. We can already begin to see a little bit of patchier cloud activity beginning to move out in towards the east here. And if this gets itself over the Sunshine Coast and things really clear up, we may be talking about a severe thunderstorm risk, not only just for this uh, area here between Rockhampton, Bundaberg, Agnes Water, and then out towards Biloela and Eidsfold, but extending a little bit further south as well into the South Burnett Forecast District and potentially as far south as Bribey Island and Caboolture. I think we can write off the severe thunderstorm chance into the Brisbane metro area at least this afternoon. We may see a squall line pushed through later into the night, uh, once again into the Brisbane and the Gold Coast area, but it should be non-severe by the time it gets there. Definitely nothing like the activity that we saw last night. And then the forecast gets a whole lot more significant for New South Wales. You can see a lot less cloud cover is currently situated through New South Wales, and it's exiting the mainland very, very quickly, which means the risk of powerful thunderstorms is there. And this includes Gundawindi, Thallon, St. George, Moree, Inverell, Armadale, Tamworth, Narrabri, Moree, Walgett, and Lightning Ridge. And then across towards Taree, Kempsey, Port Macquarie, and Coffs Harbour, we we could be seeing some big time supercell thunderstorms here. Now, supercell thunderstorms are our most dangerous variety of thunderstorms. They're the rotating ones that can produce large, potentially giant hailstones, damaging locally destructive wind gusts and heavy to locally intense rainfall. And the supercell thunderstorms that develop in New South Wales, whilst they will be on the tamer side compared to what we've been seeing over the last couple of days, they could still pack a punch. We may be talking about some pretty gnarly impacts through this part of New South Wales later this afternoon. Let's jump into that forecast right now, and you can see the forecast for Queensland still remaining turbulent as we get through the afternoon hours. Still a few thunderstorms here and there. They may develop once again late into the night out around the Warwick and the uh, the Warwick and the Texas area out towards the, uh, Gundawindi, uh, Fallon, and St. George. We may be seeing a little bit of lightning activity here after about 8 o'clock, but you can see the main event is going to be on the New South Wales side of things. The big storms are expected down there, and if we take a snapshot of the atmosphere, you can see it is a convectively favourable setup for severe thunderstorms. A great dry slot into the mid levels of the atmosphere, some good moisture all around as well, and some pretty steep lapse rates, which is our drop in the temperatures in the lower levels. And the steeper that drop is, uh, then we're going to be talking about some very, very big hail developing. Now, in terms of the risk for New South Wales, Tamworth and surrounds, I'm probably talking about three to five centimetre hailstones today, wind gusts up to 115 kilometres an hour, and heavy rainfall up to about 30 or 40 millimetres with these thunderstorms. Nothing too crazy, especially for this time of year, but still something to keep close tabs on. Now, if temperatures can get high up into the Sunshine Coast, which is still a possibility right now. It's not going to happen for Queens, uh, for the Brisbane, but if they can get themselves up there into the Sunshine Coast, we may be talking about an elevated severe thunderstorm chance up there. I don't expect, expect anything too crazy regardless to develop a good bulk shear, which is very favourable for severe thunderstorms and some pretty good moisture values through the atmosphere as well. Who knows? We may see something up along the Sunshine Coast. This is definitely going to be a day where I need to make an update at the later parts of the day, so look out for my second update later today because it is just highly dependent on whether or not this cloud clears or continues continues to develop. And if it continues to develop, storm chances will be done. Uh, but if it doesn't develop, uh, if this cloud cover does clear off and no more develops, then storm chances are going to be significantly elevated through parts of southeastern Queensland. So listen out for my update between 2 and 4 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time, and I should have the answers as to what we're going to be expecting later tonight. But what I do have the answers for right now is tomorrow afternoon storm outbreak. It's going to be special. I can pretty much guarantee that at this point in time for at least one or two locations through southeastern Queensland and a 
especially along the Capricornia and the Fraser coastlines as well. In a very similar vein to what we saw on Monday, we've got extreme convective available potential energy values streaming in towards Queensland. We've got that low pressure drop very, very close to the coastline. Great moisture streaming in from the uh, Coral Sea here in the Pacific Ocean and heat coming out out of the west here. So it's going to be a hot day. It's going to be a moist day. It's going to be a humid day. And we've got that low pressure trigger very, very close to the Queensland coastline. And this is just a perfect setup for severe thunderstorm activity. Now, I don't want to be going all crazy and saying that we're going to be seeing uh, Monday afternoon version two through southeast Queensland because we're most certainly not. Monday was an absolute freak of nature. It was an extreme. And for some, it was record breaking. And I don't expect record breaking conditions to develop through southeast Queensland. But it's a difficult comparison to draw from because whilst it's not going to stack up anything to like what we saw on Monday, it doesn't matter. We're still going to be seeing hailstones through southeast Queensland of the five to eight centimetre variety and locations along the Sunshine Coast into the scenic rim and Lockyer Valley through this yellow circle need it to watch out very closely. There could be something very significant developing in this part of Queensland. Again, I'm talking about those hailstones between five to eight centimetres, wind gusts up to 130 kilometres an hour and heavy rainfall up to 50 or even 75 millimetres in one or two places. It's still a little bit too early to say exactly what we're going to be seeing into the Brisbane and the Gold Coast area. I think these storms are going to take a little bit more of a different track and if we have a look at our convective sounding here through Thursday afternoon, you can see that those winds are actually a little bit more out of the west in the lower levels as opposed to out of the south in the lower levels to what we saw on Monday. So just keep in mind, the thunderstorms are going to be moving in a completely different direction by the looks of things. It's a bit of an interesting feature on the forecast models and if we see it's a, a pretty consistent picture through parts of southeastern Queensland, those thunderstorms do change direction up on the Sunshine Coast into the Capricornia coastline and then begin to move out of the southwest into the northeast, a, a bit more of a general pattern for southeast Queensland. But nonetheless, these storms are going to be moving in different directions and developing in different parts of Queensland, which means they're going to be different thunderstorms altogether and they'll bring different impacts compared to those storms on Monday. Still, it is too early to say exactly who is going to be impacted the hardest on Thursday, but I definitely reckon it's going to be somewhere into the Wyvernhoe outlook and then into parts of the scenic rim and Lockyer Valley, somewhere through here and potentially for the northern suburbs of Brisbane as well. So Strathpine up to Caboolture and then into towards Bribe Island and then through parts of the Glasshouse Mountains and the Sunshine Coast, you guys could fare pretty badly tomorrow afternoon and evening. Again, still a little bit too early to say exactly what we're going to be expecting. This is another case of, I want to add this question in tonight's forecast update when we do get some of the more high resolution convective forecast modeling available for us through Southeast Queensland. It's already beginning to come onto the radar right now. I mean, if we have a look at the access convective here, you can see some good thunderstorms developing out into the Toowoomba area along that dry line from about 2 p.m. onwards tomorrow afternoon and evening. And then as we push things forward a little bit further north, you can see some big time severe thunderstorms appear to be getting themselves going here along the Capricornia coastline between Bundaberg up towards Rockhampton. But again, nothing like Monday, but even then we could be still be seeing some crazy severe thunderstorm activity because Monday was just that much of a freak uh, that we may be seeing some crazy stuff nonetheless. And in terms of those convective available potential energy values, this is what's going to be propping up the outbreak on Thursday. Have a look at this numbers into the 4,000s through Southeast Queensland. Keep in mind, 1,000 can get thunderstorms off the ground, 2,000 can get severe thunderstorms off the ground, 3,000 generally uh, rings alarm bells for a severe thunderstorm outbreak. We're talking giant hailstones, destructive winds, and intense rainfall after about 3,000 uh, on the Cape scale. Uh, but we're talking about 4,000 once again on Thursday. And keep in mind, Monday's values were widespread between 3,500 up to about 4,500. So we're going to be sitting in right there around what we saw on Monday through Southeast Queensland, which means a thunderstorm outbreak of a similar caliber could be on the cards through this circle here through Southeast Queensland. Extremely high convective available potential energy values. Now, any season forecaster will look at this and say that Cape isn't everything. But keep in mind, we've got the humidity, we've got the heat, we've got the trigger for these thunderstorms. It is all beginning to come together on Thursday for what could potentially be another very significant outbreak around the Brisbane and the Gold Coast area. Now, if you've got specific questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below and I'll get back to as many people as I can throughout the course of today and I'll answer those questions to the best of my ability. But I would just like to preface this by saying that the forecast, not only for today, but also for Thursday, still has some pretty big uncertainties as to where exactly these storms are going to be the worst, exactly what we're expecting and exactly how bad these storms are going to be for an extended period of time. There's still some questions questions out there in the atmosphere for their models to decide on uh, and I'll get back to you, you with answers on that as just as soon as I know. Now as we push things forward through Friday you can see things come down through southeast Queensland. Some good storms are still possible up into parts of central Queensland and northern Queensland here. Inland from Rockhampton, north of Dingo, Emerald and up towards Claremont, Moran by Glendon, Mackay. We could be talking about some pretty good severe thunderstorm activity up here and if we have a look at the convective sounding as well a very favourable environment is uh, lying ahead for these thunderstorms uh, if it does care to load in. They're going to be pretty slow moving 
moving as well, so expect big rain dumpers in this part of northern Queensland around the Mackay area. But unfortunately for these parched locations of Queensland, this is kind of not the news that they were expecting or wanting because these rain dumpers, very, very slow moving in nature, is going to result in a significant amount of rainfall accumulating in a very short period of time. And if it's not drought, it's then going to be flash flooding. Mackay is also looking pretty likely to miss out the severe thunderstorm activity on Friday. But the other places that are looking likely include the Sunshine Coast, the Southeast Queensland coastline, including Brisbane and the Gold Coast, and the Northeast New South Wales coast as well. Saturday shaping up to be significant once again. A lot of moisture pouring in from uh, central parts of Queensland here. We're going to be talking about some pretty significant thunderstorm activity through this part of Queensland into the early afternoon hours. And then it appears that high precipitation storm modes are going to be the go through parts of southeastern Queensland, including the Sunshine Coast and parts of the Fraser Coastline, and then around Brisbane and the Gold Coast on Saturday afternoon as well. In fact, we could be talking about some very significant thunderstorm activity once again. The environment isn't as favourable for thunderstorms as what it is, uh, was on Monday or what it's going to be on Thursday, but definitely expect some very high precipitation thunderstorms to develop through southeast Queensland on Saturday. And this is our storms that are going to be slow moving in nature dropping a lot of rainfall very, very quickly, bringing a lot of lightning as well. That's one thing that we can expect on Saturday. I mean, have a look at this. Some of the lightning density estimates here from the European forecast model are suggesting some very active lightning skies through southeast Queensland on Sunday afternoon and evening, uh, and expect some damaging wind gusts as well. So whilst the hail threat is not as elevated through Saturday now as what we once thought that it was going to be, we may be talking about some pretty significant rainfall accumulations. And just having a look at this here on the forecast modeling, there are some pretty big numbers on just Saturday alone. Normally, we need to be taking a look at a couple of days to begin to paint an accurate picture for rainfall on these forecast models here. But have a look at this. We may be looking at places between 50 to 80 millimetres on Saturday, depending on how many thunderstorms come through. And areas towards the north of Brisbane up into the Sunshine Coast and inland from the Sunshine Coast through the South Burnett Forecast District, Kingaroy, Eidsfold, and out towards Taroombilla, Wheeler, Rolleston, Injun. These areas here towards the north and the northeast of this line may be talking about some pretty significant rainfall accumulations and the potential for flash flooding and maybe even some riverine flooding coming through on Saturday. Interesting, that's for sure. And Sunday should be the end of our wild severe thunderstorm outbreak. We do still see a couple of thunderstorms through southeast Queensland on Sunday. Bit of an interesting day. I, I don't really know what to make of Sunday just yet because we've got the convective available potential energy to get thunderstorms off the ground in a significant manner. But it also doesn't look like we're going to be seeing anything too crazy at this point in time just because the environment is just a little bit too stable for them. But it still remains a day to watch. And then for the first week of December, conditions really do begin to ease up across uh, southeastern and central Queensland. And for a good couple of days, we're going to be talking about some much cooler, calm and collected conditions until our next severe thunderstorm outbreak at the end of the first week of December. So an interesting time lies ahead there as well. In terms of rainfall for northern Queensland, we touched on it in yesterday's forecast update, but still nothing on the forecast models right now. You can see that there's not an awful lot coming through. It's just thunderstorm activity that's going to persist for the next five days or so on the western edge of the Cape York Peninsula. But for the Cassidy Coast and the Daintree Rainforest, we may see an increase in shower activity towards the end of this week and into this weekend from the uh, Coral Sea and the Solomon Sea. And that may bring up to 100 millimetres of rainfall over the course of three or four days into parts of the Daintree Rainforest and the uh, Cassidy Coast, but I wouldn't get my hopes up for anything too significant up here. Just expect more strong thunderstorm activity onto the western edge of the Cape York Peninsula that's been ongoing for the last couple of days and it's expected to continue throughout the next couple of days as well. And just keeping things on northern Queensland, Townsville has woken up to the sweet, sweet sound of thunder and lightning and rainfall up there. Been a pretty uh, slow start to storm season up in this part of Queensland, so good to see that we're finally beginning to see some stuff here around the Townsville area. They copped a really good thunderstorm this morning and up to 80 millimetres has fallen and that severe thunderstorm warning is still current but likely to be dropped by the time you're watching this forecast update. And just on northern Australia we still have tropical cyclone Fina here or the remnants of it. It looks very much worse for wear this morning. The low pressure system now moving inland from the Berkeley River Lodge and it's continued uh, is expected to continue moving towards the southwest throughout the course of today. Still drawing in some moisture from the Joseph Bonaparte Gulf and showers and gusty winds are going to continue through parts of the northern territory around Wadai and Kununurra and Wyndham and then down towards Walls Creek and uh, um, the Lake Argyle area throughout the course of this afternoon into this evening before they ease off later tonight. This tropical cyclone absolutely destroyed the Berkeley River Lodge, a beautiful part of northern Australia uh, into the Kimberley region and a fine place to stay but the Berkeley River Lodge is no more. It's absolutely obliterated and I've been told uh, or it's been uh, told to me that it looks like it may be beyond repair at the Ber Berkeley River Lodge at least for the, for the foreseeable future. This tropical cyclone absolutely wiped them off the map and that's what a Category 3 strength tropical cyclone sitting on one spot for 18 hours will do. Hopefully there isn't uh, enough damage as to where it's completely wiped off the map. We'd love to see them rebuild, but it is a dire situation. Very, very lucky that this didn't make that last minute turn for Kununurra or Wyndham or even for Columbaroo. Very, very lucky indeed. 
But that will be it for Tropical Cyclone Fina. It was a tough storm to track. And again, uh, it took a very, very erratic track, that's for sure. And in terms of other things happening around Australia, a few severe thunderstorms are beginning to get themselves going in towards New South Wales. But apart from that, that is going to do it for today's weather forecast update. If you have enjoyed this video, then please consider leaving a like and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Um, a special shout out to the channel sponsors. Their names are on right now. Again, I could not run the show without them and their support is, as always, massively appreciated. Leave your questions and comments in the comment section down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can throughout the course of today. And I'll of course, have a second update later tonight as well. But that's going to be all for me for now, and I'll catch you on the next storm. Goodbye.